products. I got new products. I got new products and I don't need them. Hi. Hello, everyone. It's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up? Home skillet biscuit. Ignore my missing nail. I didn't ask you to come here and be disrespectful. Walk into my house and my room, in my space, and bring your evil uncalled for. So today is a good old fashioned get ready with me. I always love doing a get ready with me because I feel like it's a great way to connect with you guys because I think a lot and I talk a lot. And for whatever reason, y'all think that's cute. So hey, here we are again. It's a pleasure to say that this video is actually sponsored by Audible. Shout outs to Audible. The amount of times I'll talk about Audible when I'm not even being sponsored by them is actually Actually, truly astounding um, on Twitter on YouTube if you don't know what audible is it is this giant epicenter of a bunch of audiobooks that you can even listen to for free if you go to audible.com slash kitty to get your 30-day free trial with a free book and two free audible originals or you can text kitty to 500 500 so I was talking about before how I really like audible originals is that my last get ready with me one of my last get ready with me is I was talking about the last days of August it's an audible original but it's like an audio book documentary even like it's a, a compilation of interviews and it's really really fascinating really heavy stuff though <laughs> I love to listen the heavy things generally for audiobooks because I'm an auditory learner. Recently I've been doing more like novels and stuff. Right now I'm about to get started on Monday's Not Coming. Monday's Not Coming is a book that I wanted to get started on soon. It sounds really interesting. Don't take my word for it. I don't know. I ain't listened to it yet. It's about a girl that goes missing and nobody really cares until she comes back and I'm like oh. If you're commuting to work and you're stuck in traffic, I listen to it a lot when I'm stuck in airports or long flights or just traveling for oh my god when i was in dc i spent so much time just waiting for things and thank god for audible for just like seriously it would have been the worst experience if i didn't have audible because i just sat there and i listened to like three books it was great again if you want to get a 30-day free trial for my viewers that's at audible.com slash kenny or you can text kenny to 500 500 to get a 30 day free trial. Big thanks again to Audible for sponsoring this part of the video. And let's get started on the beat. We real close, okay. My mom has been so irritated with like how I've been doing my thumbnails recently and it's really funny. Like for the last few months actually, my thumbnails are like mad close like this. She was like, why your head looks so big? In the last video it was really funny because I was showing kind of like the qualms of um, living at home and trying to film YouTube videos. It really involves just working around a bunch of people living around you. Seems like such a nonsensical thing, but honestly that is the biggest reason for my desire to move for the last year so I know some people were asking about that so like are you moving like do you plan to move when are you moving and at this point I've learned the hard way to not give any definite dates and just be like I'm looking to move because obviously I was supposed to move last year um, I didn't move I'm actually very very happy I did it for various reasons but I'm just happy that I kind of decided to really plan it out plan it out most effectively as I can without rushing it I felt like I was gonna inevitably really rush it if I had moved when I planned to last year. What ended up being the hindrance um, ultimately though was that I didn't have a driver's license. Fun fact, still don't. Gonna get it, I'm probably gonna get it next week because it, it there's like, again, logistic reasons why it, it I really need to get it at this point. It's kind of just very inconvenient. I have been practicing my little whip. I'm not bad. My backing up is still trash though. So that's <laughs> that's why I haven't taken an exam yet. I'm like, I'm ready, but like if they ask me to back up, it's a 50-50 chance. I might do it well, might not. It's all well and good when I'm hitting cones, probably not when I'm hitting like people. Don't wanna like leave home without having a license. I honestly feel like having your own place, and when I say own place, I also mean kind of like without roommates either, um, is really important when you're doing kind of YouTube things. Not for everybody, I find, I guess it depends on the person. I feel like I'm my most creative when I'm kind of by myself and in my own thoughts and stuff. But also there's the noise issue. People, <laughs> when they're in their house, they wanna make noise and that makes sense. But then, then you gotta film and you're like, dang, we need a resolution. We have so much confusion. It's both the driving thing, but also the fact that, yo, these apartments around here, ugly, mad ugly. <laughs> Like hella ugly. Like I'm not trying to get stabbed. I'm not trying to get shot. I'm trying to be my best self and it's kind of hard to do while you lay dying. You don't want an ugly apartment cause I ruins the aesthetic. Like, <laughs> not the aesthetic, not the aesthetic. <laughs> you gotta keep the aesthetic in mind. And so far nothing is like giving me what I'm looking for aesthetic wise. Or if it is, it's like, 
$5,000 a month. You have $5,000 a month to spend on an apartment. You do you, sis. I'm not trying to spend $5,000 a month on an apartment. That's a nice mortgage payment. That's a nice house you got for $5,000 a month, you know? I don't know. So yeah, I'm trying to find that in-between ground. Like, nice, but not so expensive that it's like, why are you in an apartment? You should just get a mortgage on a house or like a really nice condo. And at that point, that's really hindering me right now. I didn't plan to move until about September anyway, so I have a lot of time to like, consider where exactly I'm going. I'm gonna be doing a little traveling, so I didn't wanna like get a place and have to pay for a place and then go traveling and pay for that too. I like to be as organized as possible. So there was no point of getting an apartment when I wasn't gonna be there for like a month. Speaking of which, the annual Korea trip is coming up. For those of you that don't know, I tend to go to Korea. Ever since 2015, I've been going to Korea at least once a year to do something. The last few years have been more like business related and seeing friends that I haven't seen in a really long time. This is the only time I get to see my baby quail. For those of you that have heard me mention her, Claire is one of my best friends. Last year, we did a bunch of vlogs while I was there on my vlog channel. If you haven't seen those, I'll I'll just link my vlog channel that I don't update nearly enough, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try. Especially when I move, like I ain't got nothing else better to do. <laughs> Might as well vlog, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna see my baby Quail. Tammy is actually coming. For those of you that have seen that was a that was a while ago. Tammy hasn't been on my channel in like two years. Um because she lives in Florida. And I don't ever go to Florida, except I just did and I missed her last time. Still haven't seen her since then. Contour wand. Easy contour sculpture Hollywood something. I had one person use this on me and I heard Rob Beauty Christie talk about how nice it is. And I was like, okay, do you squeeze it? Do you, do you click it? What do you do? Oh, you turn and you squeeze. Okay. And it's supposed to give you just the most natural looking contour. And I remember liking it, but Okay, that's a real natural, almost too natural to justify Charlotte Tilbury prices. No, that's nice actually. Never mind, take that back. That's cute. She's a bougie, rich, natural girl. Okay. But yeah, so Korea's coming up. So planning for Korea. I'm gonna be there for quite a while this time. One of the things that I really noted of last time is that I was not there long enough, my friend. It wasn't effective in spending enough time with my friends. It wasn't effective in like meeting as many like business related things as I was supposed to do. It just wasn't effective in handling a f quite a few things. So, oh, these friggin' earrings. My mom has me wearing these earrings and they're in the way. Oh, your girl's edge is crusty, okay. I'm gonna put this on my crusty edges. We'll just we'll just cover that. But yeah, Korea's coming up and I'm excited and trying to do some little things over there. So if you're gonna be in Korea during the time, might have working on trying to do like a little like more quality meet and greet than I've done in the past. I really suck at event planning generally. So people always ask me, like, when are we getting a meet and greet in Michigan, girl? So far, if if we get a meet meet and greet in Michigan, it means that I'm doing it. You don't want that. I don't, I'm, I'm not an event planner person. I'm not good at that. That's not my strong suit. You know, know, know what you're good at. I'm not good at that. So generally speaking, my meet and greets tend to be when I can have someone else doing it. Honestly, someone else orchestrating that. Again, not my strong point. Why am I using such a tiny brush to do this? I don't know, but it feels right. But yeah, so if you're in Korea during like the June, July time, um, we might be having something going on during that time. So that sounds fun. Um, I'll let you know more details when I have more details. I think it's very tentative at this point, so I don't want to say it's happening or it's not happening. Just I'll, I'll let you know. You know, follow me on the Twitters because the Twitters is very good at letting you know things, saith the Lord. Going in with some Aspore under eye concealer cause it's bomb. I need to be careful cause I think I'm almost out of it. Not speaking of Aspore so much, but speaking of Korean brands, let's talk for about that for a second. I feel like, and I don't, no one's really brought it up to me, but I'm sure it's kind of obvious. I haven't been doing a whole lot of like K-beauty focused videos recently, which for a while was quite the focus of my channel and i just wanted to talk about that because it's been on my mind a little bit i'll just say that first it wasn't really like a decision like i'm gonna stop doing 
K-beauty videos. And I haven't really stopped doing K-beauty videos. I haven't like made that decision and said, I'm not doing K-beauty videos anymore. Cause I think that's not true. Ultimately, <laughs> I do want to do more K-beauty videos, do more things that are associated with that. Cause it interests me generally, but within the last few months or so, and I've kind of brought this up lightly k-beauty releases have not been tickling my pickle like like makeup wise skincare is still bomb it's fire it's still fire but as far as like makeup goes like new releases of makeup i'm just kind of i'm just kind of underwhelmed <laughs> that, I'll, I'll use that as opposed to bored but they kind of mean the same thing i try out a lot of k-beauty behind the scenes and recently i just haven't been wowed by things enough to bring it to my channel, if that makes sense. As I've used a lot more K-Beauty, I've noticed that color stories really haven't really changed for the last like two years, which is just mind boggling to me. Like at all, we don't change at all for two years. Everybody, every brand <laughs> is using those like kind of same roses and peaches and like that's pretty, and not to say that's just K-Beauty by the way, but it's a very specific color family that just keeps being released with K-Beauty brands recently. Like before a release comes out, someone will tell me about it and be like, hey, are you excited about this? And I'm like, I can guess what they coming out with. <laughs> a lot of the formulas I've been trying have not really moved me one way or another. A lot of like color families haven't really been like screaming yes to me. Even like the brands that I thought were more innovative in the past and have really been so, they've kind of projected the color focus of a lot of brands in K-Beauty like 3CE, um, to some extent Pony Effect, to, to these kind of like Oh, this is K-beauty, but it's but it's not the same. I feel like no one's really pushing the envelope right now. And I'm kind of like, oh, okay. And I'm the type of person that if I'm not excited by things, I don't really want to make content on it. So I don't. <laughs> also, let's not deny the obvious of me being a darker skin K-beauty enthusiast, someone that enjoys K-beauty, but I'm darker skin. I'm very much so limited in what I can use. And so if a brand is trying to send me like face products from a K-beauty brand that does not offer darker skin colors, why would I accept it? Why would I talk about it? Cause it's obvious that what, what do you want me to say? They sent me a color that doesn't match me knowing that it wouldn't match me. And I'm going to give you publicity off of that? No, I'm not gonna do that. And it was just happening all the time. And it was just so weird. I think even Darcy brought this up before where like she was getting sent products that were obviously not for her skin and she was expected to make videos on it positively, like what, or even, or even negatively because it would give it more hype or something. I don't know, but I was just not, I was just turned off by that a lot. And so that in culmination with like, things aren't really singing to me right now. I'm not getting a whole lot of releases that are like, ooh, that's pretty in any way. <laughs> Eyeshadows, lips or anything, nothing is moving me in the same way. Currently, then I'm just not gonna make videos on it for now. That has less to do with my aversion to K-beauty overall, cause I don't have an aversion to K-beauty overall. Also when I'm in Korea, hopefully I see more things that maybe are harder to see while I'm here in the States. Like when I'm in Korea, maybe I'll see products that really speak to me, but as of right now, I just haven't. And so I haven't made videos on them. I know a few people were asking me to review the new 3CE in Bloom or something Bloom collection. But again, it, I was like, for what? <laughs> it looked like pretty much every other palette I've ever had from 3CE and the blushes look like they would be ashy on me. So it just felt very like why. So right now I'm just sticking with the products that sing to me, the ones that I've always liked. I do, oh, that's one thing I was gonna say though. I do plan on doing like a full face of K-Beauty favorites as far as like products that I love. One of those is that concealer cause I'm looking plastic. But yeah, new releases haven't really been singing to me. If you guys know other releases in K-Beauty that have been going on that maybe I've been missing, I don't know. Some people wanted me to do like the Kit Kat thing. I didn't want the freaking Kit Kat palette. <laughs> it's ugly. <laughs> it wasn't ugly, but it was just like, I own that palette. 
Literally, that's every K-Beauty palette. I don't, it's just in the shape of, the, of a Kit Kat. Like, what, what do I need that for? I eat Kit Kats, so I don't put them on my face. I ate like a whole bag of mini Kit Kats that were like the green tea one, but they have several green tea ones. I don't know which one it was because I don't read Japanese, but it was like, it was a Japanese imported Kit Kat and it was like dark green tea. I smashed that whole bag. But yeah, I do want to film that video coming up soon. So if anyone's like new to K-Beauty, they can like find stuff that they like there, hopefully. I don't know what I was on. I, I think it was during my like, exploration of mukbangs or whatever. Mukbang has always been a strange phenomenon to me. I feel like it's very weird. <laughs> um, it's well, not so much just eating and talking on camera, but more so like the crazy large amount ones. Even when it was more of like a Korean thing, like when I was in high school, it was more of just like a Korean thing and I would watch it here and there. And I was just like, this is so weird to me. Like we just sit here. Just because it's more popular, my thoughts on that has not really changed. I feel like when you eat like so much food for what it just seems really wasteful to me and like really unnecessary but okay but anyway i got on the mukbang side of youtube western like american canadian youtubers and oh and i was talking about how like there was a bunch of drama there a few months ago which just was such a com just a befuddling idea like y'all eat what are y'all arguing about but while i was kind of like talking about that on twitter someone brought up a person that does mukbang but they're just kind of chill and they just do mukbang and sometimes they eat a lot of food but it's not like super unhealthy food because like the thing that gets me is like when people be eating these mukbangs and it's like the food don't even look good i get it if you sitting there eating 14 pounds of crab like king crab that looks beautiful that that to me is worth it i i would definitely do that but people be sitting there eating sonic i've always said that sonic kind of tastes like cardboard like fried battered and fried and then sometimes they put cheese and chili on it and it's just like why but anyway yeah somebody uh recommended cheap lazy vegan who is a youtuber who does mukbangs that are vegan and she's just she's just a chill girl she happens to be korean canadian canadian korean korean canadian ethnically korean living in canada there you go and so they were like kendall maybe you should check her out because i know you like korean food and you probably would be interested in her mukbangs because they don't look disgusting. And I was like, okay. Going in with this little Fenty bronzer thing. This is Island Ting. Fenty, Fenty gets me every time because the thing about Fenty is I'm not a person that's like anything Fenty does is incredible. I feel like a lot of their products can be hit or miss, but I buy them pretty much most of them because they look cute. Even if I don't like them, they back here is adornment. They're just so nice. All these friggin' lipsticks, I don't even like, well, I like the formula, I don't like the applicator of these lipsticks, but I keep them, cause, it, cause they look nice. Uh, Cheap Lazy Vegan, she's really, really interesting, by the way. I think she's a great YouTuber. I like chill people. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but like, even when I recommend YouTubers, they tend to be very like chill people. I, I'm not a huge fan of the super energetic screaming YouTube people generally. I do have a few that kind of shock me that I like them. Remy Ashton, honestly. She's just so peppy. I'm, I don't know why I like her, but I just do. I just find her very entertaining for some reason. I don't know. She just seems nice. But yeah, generally speaking, I'm not like a peppy YouTuber person. So, oh, that's a pretty, that's a nice bronze on me. Good God. I'm getting off topic. Anyway, Cheap Lazy Vegan. And I was watching her videos. Ended up doing a bunch of vegan recipes because it was so inspiring because y'all know I'm not much of, I don't cook much and when I do, I don't like touching raw meat. So the idea of having vegan meals sounds like a fun time to me because also I'm not a huge meat eater anyway. I can totally go without eating meat for several meals, if not several days. And I was really enjoying her content. But the problem is because her videos are vegan, I started getting recommended vegan youtube videos good god youtube vegans generally as a general term or at least the most popular ones are freaking psychotic i don't think there's anything wrong with being vegan i don't think there's anything like immoral i don't think there's anything unhealthy necessarily about being vegan i feel like you can have a vegan diet and it'll be healthy and it'll be great and it can be fulfilling all the basic and essential nutrients that you need as a human being on a vegan diet and you can have your ethics and you can have a healthy body. I think that's great. However, 
as I was getting recommended more and more videos, I'm just sitting here like, this ain't a diet, sis. This is an eating disorder. <laughs> like, this is not cute. I'm laughing, but it's not funny, like in all seriousness. It was actually kind of shocking how easy it was to fall into this like, this kind of rabbit hole of just seemingly really dangerous information regarding nutrition. Now, let me start off. I'm not a nutritionist. I've lived my entire life as a chubby black woman. So obviously I'm probably not the best to talk to about nutrition because I eat a lot of fried food and it's delicious. But let me just start by saying, there's some things you don't need to be a dietitian to know as far as nutrition goes. It's not hard to see that a lot of this stuff is just not healthy that people are recommending. I think what got me into this part of YouTube is because I started seeing videos of like why I'm no longer vegan videos were popping up quite a bit recently. Um, most of which were talking about how they had health problems during their vegan diet, not necessarily because of their vegan diet, but during their time as a vegan. And in making those videos, you had response videos and the response videos were saying all the reasons why they had all these health issues because they were doing these extreme diet, eating nothing but raw food, which just doesn't seem like a good idea. <laughs> How do you eat beans? Tofu, all of these things, beans, tofu, many forms of other vegan mock meat. Can't eat them because you can't cook them. So like, what do you eat? What do you eat for protein? Eating nothing but 30 bananas or your whole day is nothing but watermelon. All you can eat is salad with lemon juice on it. Oh God, kill me. I'm not saying there wouldn't be ways to do it healthily, but the work that it would take to do it healthily is not worth it when you could just cook your food. <laughs> People eating nothing but mono meals. Now in fairness, let me say this though. I used to be a mono meal eater, not because I thought it was the healthiest thing to do, it's because I was freaking lazy. <laughs> I'm like, I don't wanna cook, I don't wanna do anything. I'm just gonna eat a watermelon and just call it a day. That, that was something I did, tastes better. Actually, I got in a whole argument with one of my best friends about that. He was like, that's not food, that's not a meal. And I'm like, I know, but it like, it gets the job done. It doesn't get the job done. It doesn't give you essential nutrients. It doesn't get the job done. He's right. Don't tell them I said that. Yeah, people just complaining that they weren't able to get enough nutrients in their diet and that's why they can't be vegan anymore. And I'm like, well, you were eating nothing but avocados. So like, of course you can't get, like you're eating a half an avocado and, and carrots and zucchini noodles and tahini. Gross, this isn't food. It's like eating your compost. It's like, this is not food. And oh, and then there was just this copious amounts of just BS non-information. Yeah, the reason why you have a period is cause you have so much toxicity in your body. So if you lose your period, that shows that you're healthy. You're at your absolute healthiest because you have no period. It's, it, it was mind boggling and people were really spreading this no knowledge, quote unquote, more so I guess years ago because a lot of these videos tended to be older, but I'm just like, wow, I'm discovering this late. Fun fact, if you did not know this, if you are of childbearing age, you are the owner of a uterus and you're not taking any medication that would inhibit you from menstruating, you should be menstruating. There is something wrong if you're not menstruating. Like if you're not taking a birth control that lightens your periods or something, or taking other forms of medication that would stop you from menstruating, you should be menstruating. If you are not menstruating because you're severely underweight, that's a problem. That's not you being so healthy that you don't have a period. That's your body telling you that, I think I'm starving, so you probably shouldn't procreate right now. It was really concerning to me, and I'm actually happy that I discovered it when I did, because like I've had moments where I'm just like, not in the best mindset when it comes to body and weight and body image and body dysmorphia and yada yada yada. Don't really feel like getting into that because I'm not trying to get really heavy in this video, but like just know that it was there. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, good God, if this would have, if I would have discovered this during my worst times in that mindset, the logical part of my brain just simply would not have worked. It would not have done its job to inhibit me from doing stupid things like drinking nothing but juice for 30 days. Oh my God, the fast. Oh God, the fast. Okay, this part really shook me because when I was looking at all the people that were eating nothing but fruit for their life, like that's what they ate was fruit until they, for whatever health reason, 
they just couldn't do it anymore probably because they were severely malnutrition but that's besides the point i discovered the whole like this doctor quote unquote named doug graham um he kind of preached this whole thing of like eating 80 percent it was called 80 10 10 apparently um again i'm learning this so late so if you have no if you're if you've been in the vegan community for a while and you're like yeah we know about him blah 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 but if you haven't you're probably like oh my god the new tea what is this um it's got 80 10 10 where you're supposed to get 80 percent of your daily daily value of nutrients or whatever daily percent of your calories or whatever was from sugar rich fruits 10 percent from fat and then 10 percent from protein that is that is a horrible idea by the way don't do that that's a bad idea another thing that he used to do is he used to do fast retreats where people would pay upwards of four thousand dollars to fly with him and a group of people to like costa rica to water fast communally. Keep in mind, Doug Graham was not a doctor. He was not a registered doctor. People would fly from all around the world to come to, to one of these retreats and fast together. They would pay thousands of dollars. Um, oh, I bought some stuff from Hourglass. These are my first like Hourglass products. Um, I bought two foundations, but I didn't use them today because they were both horribly wrong colors. But one of this is the Ambient Lighting Powder. powder pouters people were talking about this years ago and i just never understood why would someone buy that but girl i just mixed all of them together because i don't feel like picking one but oh my god i am beautiful look at that <laughs> yeah people are paying thousands of dollars to fly out with this guy to fast water fast for like upwards of 20 some odd days 30 some odd days completely without blood work completely without doctor supervision and uh lo and behold people nearly died <laughs> i was watching one video that's several years old now this woman uh went to costa rica and she was fasting with him for over 20 days i want to say like 25 ish days and um she got horribly sick she was vomiting and diarrhea blood in her stool blood in her vomit for days and days and days on end and they were like no it's fine you're just you're just detoxing it's totally fine you're just detoxing and i'm just like what the f what <laughs> that girl has a parasite what are you talking about she has a whole ass infection she was losing weight as you would imagine not eating for 25 days but she was super dehydrated because she couldn't even drink water because she was vomiting consistently she ended up eating solid foods again and not getting better long story short she has to go to the hospital get a bunch of blood transfusions she had a bunch of infections or something and the whole time non-doctor is like it's cool it's fine don't tell them you were fasting though when you go to the hospital because like don't tell them that that's that's like don't tell them that which is culty which is sketch I don't know, I'm just sitting here like, oh no. Jonestown not teach us anything about following random middle-aged white men to foreign nations to find enlightenment. Never in my melanated life would you catch me out here. First of all, what are you spending $4,000 to not eat? You can do that at home. You don't need to fly anywhere to do that. <laughs> you can stay home and starve. Like you can do that on your own. This is a finesse, I, this is a hustle I ain't never seen. You, you, you getting people paying you $4,000 to not eat and possibly die, crazy. I know this isn't really painting veganism in the most positive light. And again, I don't have a problem with veganism. My problem is with extremists. With that said, along the way, I did find some vegan YouTubers that I actually enjoy really watching. Their recipes, they look good. They are good. I've tried a few, it was pretty good. I made vegan, I made a bunch of vegan things on accident and I was like, oh, okay, look at me. Eating more vegan meals. I don't think I would ever be vegan, but I do think it's a good idea just generally for health and the a million other reasons why people should eat less meat because it doesn't make sense to me why we eat so much meat in the American diet, like every meal. Like it doesn't make sense to me. I really like pickup limes. I've been following her for a while. She makes recipes that look really good. And she's also very aesthetic, but she's like quite chill about it. I also really, really like Unnatural Vegan. I've been watching her a lot recently because she does a lot of, she does more like responsy videos than like cooking videos. I think she's really good at kind of presenting practical arguments. She does a lot of speaking out against the very like restrictive diet, fad diets that kind of exist in veganism, the cleansing, the juice cleansing, the all raw diets, the 
the fasting, the, the, the only whole foods, don't eat anything processed. I feel like she's a very just level-headed person. With that said, I don't agree 100% with some of the things she says, but for the most part, she seems like a very level-headed person who values giving evidence over appealing to a lot of emotion generally. But like, I really enjoy someone who can kind of like make their point with a level head. As you may have noticed, that's something I feel very uh, passionately about. I feel like to advocate for anything, you kind of have to know how to be an advocate. Um, and of course, Cheap Lazy Vegan, because she just seems really cool. And she makes really nice videos about food. She makes good recipe videos. She made a mushroom soup that I'm really trying to make. Ooh, this became a skin day. Look at that. Ooh. Yes. Oh, now I gotta do like a new lip to like tie it all together. This is Mama Pat. Shout out to Mama Pat. And this is the faux real lip gloss. That's all for today, guys. If you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Let's me know what content you guys enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, yada yada. Follow me on my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. And I'll see you guys next time.